What's up, guys? Um, it's the early morning. Just trying to give you guys an update because I don't know what part this is. I don't know <laughs> what day this is. I know it's been like maybe six days so far, four or five days. I know that for a fact. Uh, this usually because Christmas was at the beginning of the week, so that took out two days, and falling back on stuff, such as this. <sighs> so, let me explain to you all what's going on here. We got the engine all the way in, we got it mounted up to the transmission, we've got two bolts in, I mean, we battled with this thing for a couple hours, we had to take off the engine mount as you can see back there just for it to have enough enough room to be able to get into the truck without struggling because there's a stud on the right hand side of the truck so that presented a problem by itself but what the bigger problem was is this thing has four wheel drive and I don't know if you can see that but there is a diff down there, which means there needs to be ample room for clearance. And if you can see right about there between the mount and the block, that is the oil pan. Well, the oil pan is sitting on top of the diff. We fought and 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 fought for a couple hours to get the block where it is. And <laughs> unbeknownst to us, it was the wrong oil pan. Uh, same engine, just wrong oil pan because it came out of a Jeep. And this is a Dakota, which is a lot smaller, so it doesn't need that much space. Let me, let me show you the engine in which it came from. Let's take a walk here. Cold as hell up. Still got parts in the trunk. Frozen to bits. Like, I mean, dude, it's cold. Oh, and that was the truck I was driving the other day. That. Anyway, back to this. So we had put this out here for it to be scrapped. And uh, nobody's come to pick it up for the last couple of days, so I'm, ass I'm, I'm assuming that the man above was trying to tell us something, give us a sign that this should not leave just yet. Well, good thing that the oil pan is a lot smaller. And when I say a lot smaller, it's about, I don't know, two and a half inches smaller in reference to where it mounts on the engine that goes over the diff. So, when we take it off here, we also took the sump but then we also saw all of these pieces <laughs> inside of the, those are the bolts, not worry about those, but we saw all these pieces like the gasket and, you know, chunked up metal, just, I mean, all throughout the pan. So this engine was more than toast. I mean, it could be rebuilt. The cylinders could use a home. Uh, it broke free really easily when I put the WD-40 in there and the crank spun. It spun quite freely, and I turned it over and turned it over and turned it over, and it moved fine. It just it needs it would it would have needed a rebuild anyway. But we took the pan off of there, so let me uh I can show you guys the pan. Okay, so this is the other oil pan. Let me see if I can show you the difference. Now I don't. I hope I can see. You can see there. Just you see how I guess in reference to the pan, how small the sump bottom is well on the truck <laughs> it's about two inches two and a half inches longer than that so it sits in the way completely in the way and that was that's that that caused us a problem i mean we had the truck in here freezing cold you can see your breath in the garage and we thought we were good until we got to the bottom and uh, realized that was a problem so Today, we're supposed to take it back out again, take it off the mounts, I mean, redo this whole process, 
put that pan on. Uh, maybe that sump pick up too. Maybe. Not really sure about that because the other one might work. But if it doesn't, we'll be swapping out that too. And in the back end, it should only take about an hour max because uh, we know exactly what to do. We just ran into that issue that we did not know. Everything else we knew with that was the problem. So if you have a 4.7, like I guess Jeep, Dakota, Durango, and you're swapping them all between each other, make sure you check the oil pen, especially if you have four wheel drive, because that'll cause a problem. So, like I said, it's early morning, and when they wake up, we'll get back at it. Let's go. Nice, Chevrolet 50. He just got it running. You got your phone on you? Yeah. That's nice. Add a block intake. Yes. Hurry. Hurry, too, man. You did a good job, man. Putting it in there. Hurry. Put this thing in 15 minutes. <laughs> With all this space, yeah. Man, that's nice. Yeah, it, it definitely, it definitely does. All right. Stop. That is nice. Yeah, like I said, I got a caliber over here hanging up on this damn track. Gotta, gotta love, gotta love the cable throttles. Gotta love. I just love old carburetor engines, man. Ah, man, this is. Look, there's nothing there. Look. Awesome. Yeah, that's the best part about it. I've had so. This is awesome. Damn, this is nice. Yeah, we actually had to take it back out. Like I told you earlier, we had to take it back out, change the uh, oil pan, because the oil pan was uh, Three bigger. too big. Actually, where's the old one? Uh, I put it in the bay. Oh, well, it's out there. It, it anyway. Three inches too big. Yeah, it was, it was like two and a half, three inches too big, like I was telling you, so we had to switch, swap it out, got that done. Uh, actually, it, Which means the, it's probably going to leak now. <laughs> yes, that is true, because the pan was never removed, so, you know, once you remove the pan, yeah, it, it leaks. Yeah. We RTV'd it though. The uh, crank and everything so far from what we could see down there from the bottom was uh yeah, look looked, looked pretty damn good. Yeah, it so good inside, actually. uh man, we got it lined up and then we had to take it back out because of the freaking mounts and then the hole and then there's a front diff that I was telling y'all about and it's a it's a clusterfuck. It's, well, what's up, baby? Told you. We gonna we're gonna have we're gonna get our fun out of this bitch as soon as we get it running. Yeah. Without that work, we're definitely gonna have some fun. Yeah. So, right now we're just doing all the small stuff, majorly small stuff, and then the small, majorly minor stuff. I mean, stuff. we really only have a couple hours left on this. Yeah. In all reality, I mean, two, three hours maybe, um, two people, and, and uh, I mean, it's, it's not, a, I mean, the wires only go so plenty fucking places, so yeah. you don't have to really worry about that, because we didn't take it apart. Nope. But, uh, we did take that Durango part, so we should know where everything goes with the hoses. I think the only game we're, the only game we're gonna have a problem is like just remember where the fucking all the vacuum lines went. 
That's really it. Well, that's why we got videos, pictures, and Google. That's right, we do. Videos, pictures, and, and Google. Care. And check here. But all them hoses we got, I mean, they just, they, they just, they kind of. They can't go anywhere else, really. Yeah, I mean, they all make sense. Yeah. So. Not well, like it was back in the day when every fucking hose went, it's just like, you just take them off and you gotta reroute them yourself. Yeah. I don't, I don't miss them days. So we're standing there so far, so. Welcome to another episode of Yacht Life, and today we're gonna go pick up my engine block from the machine shop, work on my car, and try to finish up this Dakota because, well, it needs to get running. Let's go. Let show you what we got last night. <clears throat> well, let's see. We got the engine fully mounted. We got the engine mount bolts all the way in there. We were fighting the last time. Both sides. We got uh, we got the trans bolts in. We've got the torque converter bolts in, the flywheel bolts. Um, everything is pretty much bolted up to the trans and the frame of the car. Uh, put the power steering pump on last night. Got a couple of miscellaneous things, as you can see, it's clearly not done. The uh, radiators over there, we got to put that in. Uh, we got to put on the uh, clutch fan. Got to put the fans back in. A couple of a couple of small things that we got to do. So. Hopefully we can get started today before it gets dark, especially while it's raining and it's bringing a lot of heat. We can get a lot done a lot quicker. And we should be done today. We should really be done today. We've already got we've already got oil, we got cooling over there. So we're good to good to go on that part. So Oh, we also had to go to the junkyard. <clears throat> Grab that manifold back there because the uh, the last one that came with the engine had uh, a welded stud in it. I mean, I'm not sure who did it, but we couldn't even put it on. So went back to the junkyard, grabbed that off of a Durango. Same exact wounds, same exact engine, and uh, put it on. But that's where we're at now. Well, it's time to go get my engine block out of my car. Let's go. Okay, well, I got the whole engine. Um, I'm bolted from, oh, you got the part of me because I'm munching down. I had the whole engine. On bolts from the transmission, all the bolts are out. Token rotor bolts are out. The starter's off. I mean, you guys saw the last video. Everything's pretty much done. Uh, I had to take off the AC condenser. Other than that, token rotor bolts. The last couple of bell housing bolts in the back that actually connect to the oil pan. The oh? The headbone. The <laughs> uh, other than that, I mean, it's ready to go. I'm about to pop it out. I'm going to put the head bolts in here. Uh, the small ones. If they snap, I'll just go to the dollar, the, uh, dollar ship. Definitely not the dollar store. And get some more because they're cheap. So, not to really worry about that. And if they snap off in the block, who cares? This block's trash and anyway. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's much better. Uh, what? We ain't fucking wobbling no more. Oh, yeah, it's not wobbling. You're right. Much, much better. Munching, hungry, stuff, hard work. Right. About to go ahead and yank this out.
got the engine out. As you can see, it's sitting right there. I got to drain it. It still got oil in it. And some of the coolers actually mixed with the oil because it's been tilted over. So. Dang, I don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, well, right sit, <laughs> sitting in the, uh, sitting in the engine. Yeah. Shit. Huh? Power, yeah. <sighs> just dangling my feet in my engine bay. Trying to find something to support my transmission. Because I don't want it to fall while I'm gone. Do, 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 do. Do you ever wonder what it looked like to put a 500 pound engine inside of an Acura MDX? <laughs> this is what it done. looks like. <laughs> and the suspension is kind of sitting a little low, but not that much. Am I going to hurt it? Yeah, we got a tow capacity of 5,000 pounds. I think it'll hold it. Make that. To the water pump Jeez. in AutoZone in the store Luckily. using the tool. They don't let you do this, but you know what? We get to do it. We, we get to do it. We're special like that. Damn, that blade hurts though. I'll tell you that much. It started, it started to cut into my hand. We didn't bend it. And we gotta find her. Aftermarket trans cooler for this Dakota because he's gonna be torn with it. And this is stuff they don't let you do in AutoZone. They don't just let you walk in the back, climb on ladders, and you know, find out what you want. Like this is not a this is not a candy store. Well, it's a candy store for us, but. Oh, here we go. The, 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 it on the first one? No, it has all the information on that. Oh, okay. Well, what's that? They don't let you do stuff like this. Like, you tell me in what state of America they just let you <laughs> see you know, shit like the Amazon buses. Ah, there you go. That's the one I want right there. Uh, 911401. We're bringing it up front. Show him the number. 911401. They do not let you do this in regular stores, man. See, because we're special, though. Yeah, that's right. Covered in grease. Uh, yeah, that is definitely true. Ooh, that looks pretty though. Cool shit. 
That's these, these little straps just go right into the radiator. And you put these little clips on the back. Boom, done. Very cool. That's nice. See, you can't be a car guy and not appreciate brand new parts that oh, look yeah, like that. Dude, when you see it from the front, it looks cool as hell. That's right. That's what I need. All right, let's go.